most of us eat every day, some of us too much, because yesterday's food is not enough to supply energy for today's needs. Why then do some of us expect yesterday's portion of heavenly manna, the Word of God, to keep us through today's challenges? On this program, we are going to change all of that. Let's experience God's words today and receive the power we need to live healthy, vibrant lives. Welcome to your daily portion with your host, author, speaker, L. David Harris. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday, April 10, 2024. Hello, my name is L. David Harris. I am your host, and this is your daily portion, where we give you God's Word every single day, and today is no exception. We are continuing in our lesson study series through the concept, the principle of the great controversy. Uh, before we get into that, our caption, really, I forgot to tell you, is uh, caring for the community. Uh, but before we get into that, I would like to ask you to please go over to your dailyportion.com. Please join our online community. Pick up the your daily portion book and let us know where you are in the world at your daily portion.com this is a way that we continue to build faith and fellowship let's go ahead and pray and then we will get underway father in heaven thank you for this new day and for the opportunity we have to open your word again please give us your unusual wisdom teach us how to serve you today and teach us what community really is like in jesus name i pray Amen. And amen again. Caring for the community. And in my lesson, I actually underscored the term caring. Caring for the community. Let me ask you a question. Once we create community, and I'm speaking to people of faith, uh, especially those who are considered to be leaders, like once we create a community, um, do we actually nurture and feed and protect the community? Let me ask you again, do we actually, once we are creating community, and one of the ways that we create community is through uh, what we're doing now, like in churches around the world, we have Bible schools, right? And in those same Bible schools, like you can actually become members there before you get baptized into the fellowship of believers, you understand? And as we are in these environments and people are coming into our fellowship through these Bible schools, some of us call it Sabbath schools, yes, once they are in those, are we nurturing and feeding and protecting those communities? Some of you call them members. What about when someone is baptized? Maybe it's through a series, right? A series of gospel messages or evangelistic messages, as some people call it. Uh, once people come into the community through Bible schools or through baptism or both, are we nurturing? Are we feeding? Are we protecting? And if not, the entire community is going to be lost. I need to say that again. If we're not nurturing and feeding and protecting, it doesn't make sense to build a community. It does not make sense to bring people into our fellowship because Jesus, the good shepherd, and I think uh, that's an understatement, Jesus, the ultimate great shepherd, he nurtures and protects and he feeds the sheep. Just go to John chapter 10 and see where Jesus speaks of that. And anybody else is considered a hireling. Like if we are on supposedly on the team with God, like right? if we are supposedly a part of the community of faith, then we should have the same mindset that Jesus has. Otherwise, we are considered to be like hired help, hirelings that don't care because the sheep are not theirs. They just allow this, the, sh the sheep to be scattered when the wolves come. Hmm, something to think about. But we're talking now about caring. Uh, in the lesson, it reads, the early Christian church grew not only because it was uh, its members preached, and I underscored that, the gospel, but because they lived the gospel. Now, let's see an example of this from the book of Acts chapter, uh, let's go with chapter 6 first. Acts chapter 6, and I will read beginning at verse 1. And the Bible reads, now in those days when the disciples were growing in number, a complaint arose 
in, on the part of Greek-speaking Jews against the native Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. At least that's what the perception of, uh, of it was. I, I don't really have the time. Verse 2, so the twelve called the whole group of the disciples together and said, let me just say, this is a practical move. This is a true leadership move. This is what they did. They said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to wait on tables. That is to take care of these very specific practical needs. And you're like, but Dave, how can you be in a community of faith, like a fellowship of believers and not have those practical or felt needs handled or dealt with. Well, this is not where it stopped, but carefully select from among you. So this is a part of the strategy, and now it's going into the tactics. This is what we're going to do to make sure that people are taken care of well, okay? Uh, select from among you brothers, seven men, specifically seven, here we go, who are well attested, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this necessary task. So they were practical. They were tactical. They were strategic. They dealt with the, the felt needs in a specific way by selecting specific people who, by the way, ha, and not incidentally, were to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So if our community of believers, right, the fellowship that we are building does not nurture Hmm? does not feed, does not protect, then we are not living up to this, this specific guide that God has given us, the example that the early church demonstrated. Let me just see what else God has to say here. Uh, verse 4, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And so there were people in this community who were specifically set aside in a spiritual, practical way for the ministry of the word. And then others would manifest the ministry by what? Practical, hands-on, felt needs type nurture and care and protection. You see where we're going with this? Very well organized. Verse 5, the proposal pleased the entire group, so they chose Stephen, a man, full of faith and the Holy Spirit with Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas and a Gentile, excuse me, Nicholas was a Gentile convert to Judaism from Antioch. Verse 6, they, they stood these men before the apostles who prayed and placed their hands on them. So those who were selected ha, by God and from the fellowship to be the spiritual leaders, if you want to say, servant leaders, these men who were supposed to be ministering the word in a specific way, those individuals now are laying hands on the people who were now going to do some more practical hands-on type ministry. Huh? The word of God continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly, and a large group of priests Yes, those people that you thought were lost, those people that you thought Jesus did not love, the people that you thought Jesus was a critic of. Well, it says here that even a large group of priests became obedient to the faith. Why? Because God loves them. He loved them. He loved all of the people, the leaders and the followers, if you want to say. The people who seemed not to be getting the message when Jesus would, would cry over them like in Matthew 23, but there were people like Nicodemus who came. Yes, Nicodemus came by night, but he said to Nicodemus, ah, you must be born again. He said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that you, Nicodemus, could be saved. And so there were a great number of priests, according to this message here, ha, that became obedient to the faith. And so caring for the community is not just building a community. It's easy to build a community. Ah, but to care is to nurture hmm, the felt needs, yes, and to let them know that they belong and that God loves them and show it, yes, and to feed, to give them practical feeding and spiritual feeding and to protect the community. Otherwise, the community is going to go right down the tube. Care for the community you build. Have a wonderful day. Peace. Thanks for joining us, listening friends. Always remember, we cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This has been your daily portion with L. David Harris. 
make it a great day.